Years ago, if we wanted to get from point A to point B, we would use some kind of physical map, something like a Thomas guide, or maybe even a gas station road map. But those days are gone. Today, we're gonna use the GPS on our phones and a map app. We enter a starting position, point A, where I am, and then we enter a destination, point B, where I am going. And with that information, the map creates a route for us. Kind of, almost. Uh, we actually missed a critical piece of information here. The app needs to know how we intend to get from A to B. Am I walking? Am I riding a bicycle? Am I driving? Those are completely different paths. And our CNC machines work in the exact same way. Look. We start by defining our point A, where I am. Then we'll give it a destination, a point B, uh, where I am going. Then we have to tell the control how to move between these two points. Except this time, we're not gonna travel by car or bicycle. We're gonna travel by G1, G2, G3, or G0. Now, let's say that our point A, where our tool is currently at, is at X0, Y0 in our current work offset system. Point B is where we want our tool to go next, our destination. Uh, let's say that that is at X20 inches, 508 millimeters, uh, but still at Y0. Now, if we use a G1 to move from point A to point B, it's gonna move in a straight line. But if we use a G2, our tool is gonna to make a right-hand clockwise turn in between those two points. And if we use a G3, our tool is gonna to take us on a path between those two points that's, that's turning left, anti-clockwise or counterclockwise to move us to our destination. So, same exact two points, but three different ways to get there. Well, that is it. And thanks for watching this Haas Tip of the Day. Not so fast. Uh, it's easy, but not that easy. G1 is pretty simple. It carries our tools from point A to point B in a straight line. But G2 and G3 do have some complexity to them that needs to be looked at. So uh, we've moved our points. We now have a couple of different points here, different start point, that's now gonna be at X0, Y0, different end point, that will be at X0, Y8 inches, about Y200 millimeters. If we use a G2, uh, a clockwise right-hand arc, to get us from point A to point B, we need to define how large of a radius we're gonna cut. And we do that by using an R value. Look here, G2, R8, that's a radius of eight inches. And here it is, that same cut, with an R6. And once more, with an R4, a radius of just four inches. Here's where we really need to pay attention, though. Um, there is another path, a, a second solution, that meets all of these same criteria. It's still a clockwise arc. It has exact same start and end points, and it even has the same size radius. So it's the same shape, but one is more than half a circle and one isn't. To create this longer arc, we just put a negative sign in front of our R value. That is it, really. Here, let me prove it to you. Here's our code. One with a negative R and one with a positive. Both cutting six inch radius arcs. But the one on your left, the one with the negative sign, takes the long way, giving us a circle section greater than 180 degrees a longer section. Now, is it really a negative radius? No, there's no such thing. That's just a convention. The negative sign is just the way that we let the control know that the arc is larger than half a circle. So, because we used a G2, our arcs break right, clockwise. Now, we can create left-hand arcs, curving counterclockwise, by using a G3. Again, with either a positive R value, or a negative one. So look, 
These are the exact same two points, A and B, but four possible circular routes. Now, of course, all of these codes, G123, can be stacked one right after the other in order to create a complete part contour. So let's take a look and see how all of those pieces go together. Now, each of these wooden track pieces will take you from one point to another in a very different way. Sound familiar? Right? G01, a straight line. G02, clockwise arc. Or G03, counterclockwise arc. So let's go for a ride and look at some code. Our train engine rolls from a G1 into a G2, into a G3R 4.5, and then a long banking G3R 8.0. Turn after turn, our train follows our simple codes as it heads into a long sweeping ride. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> It looks like we forgot the negative sign on that giant circular motion to the right here, and we paid the price. Arc segments, circle segments larger than half a circle need the negative sign. So let's go ahead and change this R8 to a R negative eight, and we'll keep going. With that fix, we can safely complete our route and make it back to the station. Every part that you've ever made, ever will make, can be made using these same three codes. G01, G02, G03. And you take those bits of code. And you can put them right back together with other codes to create a complete part contour. Now that we've covered the basics, I'd like to swing back around and cover another way that we can create arcs. Now, what if our point A and our point B are the same point? This can happen if we're trying to create a complete, a full circle where we start and finish at the same spot. Instead of defining an arc by its radius size, we can call out the center of the arc instead by using an ij value, where i is the distance from our starting point to the arc center in the x-axis, and j is that center point distance in the y-axis. I'll let you follow up on that method in the mill manual. So this can be helpful when thread milling or when milling a boss. Now, of course, if you want to use the simpler R value method, you can. You've just got to break that circle up into smaller arc segments. One final way of getting from here to there quickly that we haven't mentioned yet is our G0 code. Now, unlike our G1, 2, and 3 cutting moves uh, that require a feed rate, we don't need an F value with a G00. But with a G0 rapid command, we're really not concerned about how precisely we get from point A to point B. We just want to get there as fast as humanly possible. And so we use this rapid move. You never want to be in a cut, engaged in machining when using a G00. And depending on what machine you have, what year it was built or what software version, one thing to remember about rapid moves is they might not always take you in a straight line. While all axes are moving as fast as they can, you may end up with what we call a dog leg rapid. This is where one axis reaches its destination before another, like a dog leg fairway on a golf course. Newer machines, machines with the NGC control, have setting 335, linear rapids. And when that is enabled, your rapid moves will move from point A to point B in a straight line. No chance of hitting anything, no more dog legs. Well, now you know some different ways to get you from point A to point B in your program. If you got something out of today's video, hit the like button and comment. 
tell us what you think and what you'd like us to, to do a video on next. Speaking of that, we made another video recently called Essential Nine Lines. It's kind of a companion video to this one. It shows all the other necessary codes that you need to write a real program. We'll link to that video in the description, so be sure to check it out. Now we'd like to say that the codes that we talked about today are, are codes that every CNC programmer should really know and understand. But once you've got these basics down, we suggest that you move on and find yourself a nice modern CAM system and spend some time getting good at it. That is how you're gonna get ahead as a CNC programmer. Well, that is it for real this time. Thanks for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.